for many nits. There we are. Now we've got two queens from the incubator. So we put the we take the queen cells out of the cell raiser on day 14, put them in uh, the incubator, and then they hatch within a couple of days. And uh, we feed them on uh, food, honey and water together, 50-50, just a drop or two. Soon after they've hatched as possible, we put them in a queenless nuke. So I'll get this. And we can put that in here. Just shove that in there. So what we do is bring the queen down from the incubator and then we put a bit of marshmallow in the end because it, it just it's fairly quick release actually then you don't need to keep these queens caged for ages but it gives them a little bit of protection just in case so um, I'll take this off. There they are. Now that one is pretty good black bees, actually. There's a yellow one there. So they release her quite quickly. And um, they'll have a virgin queen. Within 12 days, she's usually laying, but I mean, you can allow, say a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and then you know, what you really want to see is the seal brood. And then you know she's laying worker, worker bees, not Drone brood. So that's, uh, that needs a yellow pin in it now. We haven't got one. So there's a virgin queen in there. Same here. We're going to do the same again with this one. Plug of marshmallow. Sticky old stuff. Okay. Right, I'll put that in there. Not so busy this one, but there are bees in there. They don't have to be a lot, as long as there's enough to look after them, look after a bit of brood when it starts appearing. And there's plenty of stores in there. So that should keep that going. We'd put a yellow pin in this now to show there's a virgin queen on it. If they got a yellow pin, they're um, um, so they got virgin queens in. So waiting for them to start laying, it only takes about 12 days. Uh, usually minimum of 12 days, but say 12 to 15 days, and then they're usually laying eggs. So uh, it's very, very quick. Um, I've been told that apodeas are even quicker or quicker until they're worth using, but I don't accept that you can, 12 days is pretty quick to me. Uh, so I'm happy. They're all yellow, so there's no spares in them. Here's the yellow. She's been mated. She's been laying all winter. She's last year's. Right. Uh, well, at least she was. Uh, the white, if it's a white one, it's a white mark queen. And gradually we'll move them on. So we overwintered. That's the nice thing about these nukes, is we can overwinter them. And that to us is a huge advantage. Because you, it's a way of having a supply of queens in the spring. And um, you haven't got the big hassle of 
restarting your mini nukes, which is a big, big job. These are already populated and they can uh, overwinter on two boxes or even, and in the spring we usually build them up to three while we're waiting for our, our new batch of queens to come in, in about May, April, May. And we can just split these off. So if that's populated, we can make a new colony. I'll take that off, put a new roof and lid and take it to another site. And then it's ready to in, have a new queen introduced. So it's an ongoing system which works really well. That's why we like it. Uh, the apodia is, you, you, okay, people do overwinter them, but they're not, it's not easy. And it's not as reliable as these. These are much more self-sufficient units. Let's see what this one's like. I'll take two boxes off. They're a bit mixed few yellow ones amongst them, which is probably why we haven't used that queen. What we've got to do with them, um, when we, we use colour as a big indicator, and if, if they're all black, we think that queen's mated within the strain, and she'll be either sold to somebody who wants a black queen, or used to populate one of our colonies in this area, in, they call this the mating area, really. It's only about three miles circumference, three or four miles circumference, really, that we're trying to dominate with our bees. Anything that isn't up to standard, we'll move out of the area further afield. We always keep the best bees in this area for mating purposes. We don't at the moment. Uh, we did at one time, but now we just populate with a large number of colonies and let them produce whatever drones they like. And all those colonies are up to a certain standard. So uh, we assume they're gonna be putting out pretty good drones. Um, and we just let them do how many they like. When you start off though, trying to dominate an area, obviously that is an advantage. If you can produce more drones, more good drones, it's to your advantage because you're it's helping to dominate that area. And that's really what it's all about, is trying to find an area that you can dominate or you and a group of other beekeepers can dominate with, with good drones. Otherwise we're all fighting and losing battle really. Um, we're being swamped by imported queens or descendants of imported queens and it's hard to get a, a strain going that's consistent and that breeds true basically. And people wonder why we're so mad on the black bee. And for me it's um, because I believe if you stick to a breeding within the strain, you can get them to breed true and you can make progress in bee improvement. And if they're producing all sorts of types of bees, which their offspring from hybrids will, you can't get any consistency going. And so it's uh, you're fighting and losing battle really. Um, yeah. When we started queen rearing, we were using epideas and we got on all right with them. Uh, but there are issues, as far as we're concerned. They do need a close eye kept on them, and you can't take your eye off them for a minute, really. Uh, certainly, you've got to look at them every week, which we do anyway, but they're either too crowded or too hungry or something like that. Um, we've moved over to this sort, which is a six frame, sometimes called mini plus nukes. They're six frames, and they, you buy them, and they've also got They've got two entrances, one at the front and one at the rear. Uh, that's a block, that one's blocked off at the moment. We keep, tend to keep the bits in the top. Here's an entrance block, for example. And you could put that in there, make a flight. You also get a polystyrene partition, which you could put there and make and open up the other entrance. So you've got two nukes in one. You've got one nuke this side, one nuke that side. One's going out here. We've tried that and we haven't liked it very much. Um, it's a fiddle, especially with that polystyrene thing. Now, these are wedged in tight and you've got to handle them. Uh, we've stuck to using a sing them as a single nuke box with one entrance. There's your feeder. You can put syrup in there, which is what we do. So we just use syrup on these. Um, that's just a spare block if you want to move the thing. 
you can build them up. So if 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 we're under over winter and they're getting really big, we put another another box in the middle. That one will go in there, give them more space, and we often overwinter them like that. Okay, the big advantage of these is you can overwinter them really easily. You can make sure they've had plenty of food and they've got a nice, quite nice strong colony in there. You can even go three frames. We sometimes do three boxes if you want. Um, when you start off and you haven't got any bees in these, it's a bit like an epidere. You've got to pour bees in and you probably need more than an epidere. It's 300 mils for an epidere, but probably a litre for these, a litre of bees to start with and you put foundation in the combs. Just a strip like that. That's how we do it. Uh, give them plenty of syrup and they'll draw those combs out if they've got a, a queen in there. They won't bother drawing it if they haven't got a queen. They need a queen to make them draw the wax. And then they'll draw the combs out. There's one, quite good. Uh, they'll soon mend up any nonsense, um, holes and things. And so we run them all year round, these. It's not compatible with anything else. That doesn't really go with anything else. So once we've loaded, when we first bought them, we had loaded up this litre of bees and got some established. But once you've got them established, you can build your colonies up. And if that was this six frames of bees, I could then take three frames out and put them into a new box. Take the new box new box to another site and then I'd introduce the queen into that new box you know without the queen leave the queen with one and fill it up with frames uh, so they're very flexible and I can build up to two boxes and when that's full of bees I can just leave the queen in one take the other one away to a new site set up a new colony so you're constantly dividing as you need to and um, producing queens. You, when the queen is laying, it's nice to let them lay for a while and get to the seal brood stage. Test check all is well. Nice lot of brood, good healthy brood, and uh, not a drone layer, which is the other worry. And if, if it's all good, you can take the queen out. She's ready to go into one of our colonies or, or to sell. Uh, and we can put a new queen in from our incubator. That's what we do. So we'd introduce that in a little cage with a bit of marshmallow just to hold up the process, the introduction process. And normally she's accepted. We find that they're often laying on about day 12, but there's no rush. You can go back in two to three weeks and you should see what she's like. Uh, if she's a drone down, we take her out, introduce a new queen. If all is good, take her out for, our, for whatever we need to do with her. And that's how the system works. So we find it very convenient to just have these going all the time. And in the, in the spring, it's lovely because you, you're already, as soon as you've got your queen cells coming on, you're ready to go. And you can take an old queen out and put a new queen in. And somewhere there's a roof. That's it. You have to roof anything is you have to put a stone on everyone otherwise it all blows away. <laughs>